previously we looked at the worst characters Twisted Metal has to offer, now we will look at the top 10 most overpowered, disastrous characters in this entire series. The only rule is the character needs to be playable without Game Shark codes, all else goes. At number 10, we have Outlaw from Twisted Metal Small Brawl. Initially, no one would really think much of this thing, which on paper, Outlaw is nothing special, but the thing that makes him so powerful is how you're able to leech health off of your enemies. If you're someone with a very fast trigger finger, Outlaw's health can go from the danger zone to around 90% or even full from a single use of his special. This can help immensely on hard mode with boss fights since Trapper and Piecemeal are not really fun to go against due to their absurd health pools and spamming power missiles. Outlaw is one of the few characters who doesn't really need to worry about this. You can drive around the boss with a special that locks on, dealing more damage when you button mash, and regain all the health you just lost whenever they try to hurt you. Every other character needs to play around health packs and be careful, while Outlaw can play like a mentally stunted stump with his get out of jail free card. And to my knowledge, this is the only character who has the ability to refill their own health bar like this. It just just helps immensely in certain situations. Also, if you take into account how Small Brawl is very crusty with using the shield, sometimes it just doesn't work for whatever reason, regardless of how slow or fast you press the buttons. So free health gain is quite overpowered, honestly. If the special had a longer cooldown, maybe Outlaw wouldn't be here, but thankfully we have the ability to do this, making Small Brawl's version of Outlaw the best in the entire series. At number 9, we have Shadow from Twisted Metal 2. We have a very bizarre situation here. Your special is fine by default as you drive around in your Barney ass car blowing people up as you do. The damage isn't terrible shooting out your sideways panther with serviceable power, but the hood classic tactic is actually trying to blow this panther up on an incline. This stems from small ramps, hills, even the little teleporter pads. For whatever reason, with how Twisted Metal 2 works, any detonatable explosion will deal twice the damage than normal, I believe it is. If not two times, then it's definitely still a noticeable amount, allowing you to kill literally any character in this game with Sonic the Hedgehog speed, even the bosses. The minion fight is actually a joke with Shadow since this level is idiot proof when it comes to utilizing this exploit. The only level where you may struggle to use this could be Holland, unless the AI are sitting around one of the teleporter pads. The only worry you're going to have while playing Shadow is just not blowing yourself up since obviously you can get carried away with the detonatable panthers and destroy everything. The damage potential you have is unreal depending on how much you utilize the bug. Shadow is a lot of fun and just broken as hell in this regard. If Shadow were immune to his own special explosions, then he would be even higher. Number 8 is Roadkill from Twisted Metal Black. John is quite the hefty force, and to me, he's the most consistently best and easiest character for anyone's tournament playthroughs. When you fully charge his barrage of missiles, literally any character will lose a sizable chunk of their health regardless of their armor. This includes bosses. The Warhawk fight is a snooze fest, which is why I coined this as the Snorhawk or Boarhawk fight all that time ago because this fight is just boring. I don't particularly enjoy this battle. Thankfully, Roadkill sends that worthless piece of shit boss careening towards the ground, giving you one of the best endings this series has ever seen. When it comes to Minion, his special is just one extra projectile to destroy his shield with. Instantly destroying a panel makes the whole fight a lot simpler for you. Plus, if the shield is broken, you can blow him away quite easily. Black in general is a more difficult entry in the series, so being able to have a character who can do this and help someone dip their toes into the experience, help them understand the game, is a really nice inclusion. Like honestly, if someone's never even played Black, I don't see how they could struggle with Roadkill. The second you learn how to hold a button down, you're going to be in the safe zone. You deal so much damage to everyone with great handling and serviceable armor. On top of this, picking Roadkill makes it so you don't need to fight him throughout the tournament mode, which is a massive positive for you, since he's probably the most irritating AI in this entire game right next to Shadow, again making your run even easier. At number 7, we have Crazy 8 from Twisted Metal Black. As much as I loathe the driver of this vehicle, Actually playing as the automobile is an enthralling experience, essentially being outlaw but not outlaw, adapting the traditional electric tethering special weapon, which is alright, but the true power comes from the secret special weapon. After pressing up three times, you're able to make it much stronger. 
The game calls it max power or something. Doesn't really matter what it's called because all anyone needs to know is how much damage you can dish out with it, depending on how fast your trigger finger is, of course. If it's slower, you may not be able to reach the potential of what Crazy 8 is capable of, but when you do reach that ceiling, you can melt enemies so fast it will make you want to sell your partner's underwear online without their consent. That's how excited you will be, becoming a true alpha male of the swamp. Crazy 8's power also stems to bosses. They are very easy due to the secret special weapon. When I first learned about the capabilities, it was a jarring experience. If you didn't know this special exists or could even do this, it's worth giving a go to see how strong it actually is. My top three characters in black are all interchangeable, but I feel out of Roadkill, Shadow, and Crazy 8, the male version of Helen Keller here has to be the best due to his damage potential. Number Dix is Axel from Twisted Metal 2. Out of the regular roster, including Sweet Tooth, Axel is by far the best character in this game. He feels just like a boss, like no joke. Anyone in your path will be crushed beneath your wheels. To the point where you can forget about weapon pickups half the time, shielding, using your special, and ramming is just your best friend here, which you can obviously do an infinite amount of times. If you want to go dicko mode, you can just forget about shielding and try your best to finish the game that way. Like, why bother even thinking at this point? Lower armored enemies' health bars go from 100 to 0 in a few hits. Larger enemies, even ones like Hammerhead, who you'd think would be in this position because that's a monster truck, Axel makes them irrelevant and can still ram them to death. Even Minion, you can feasibly beat him in a 1v1 ramming battle. It may take a little bit more thinking than the rest of this game, but it's still 100% possible. Dark Tooth, on the other hand, may not be in the cards, but still, I wouldn't be shocked if you could reliably beat him in a ramming battle. Axel is so broken, I don't understand what this is. All I know is that he's a lot of fun to use. At number 5, we have Dark Side from Twisted Metal Small Brawl, one of the secret characters of this game, who you'd think would be a boss character due to the power you possess. First off, you have the highest armor in the entire game, which is expected from a big truck like this. The only characters you'd assume would have more armor are the bosses, which they don't. Playable piecemeal and trapper both suck. And two, Dark Side's special weapon damage potential is the highest in the entire game. So you're basically unstoppable. Like seriously, hard mode genuinely feels like easy mode. Any other mode feels like you're cheating. The main tactic with Dark Side is just using the special, hitting someone, tapping reverse, and then moving forward again so you can repeat the damage over and over. Typically getting two to three hits with a single use, allowing you to kill most enemies instantly. Even boss battles, which are known for being over redundant in this game, playing with any character on hard mode is a slog due to this. The health pools are absurd. Dark Side just doesn't give a shit about that though. Trapper and piecemeal can be eaten alive live like a fat kid to a cookie store. Again, nothing's really gonna kill you. Like, your only deaths are going to come from you being stupid, pretending you're some WWE superstar walking to the ring or some shit. If you want a mindless, brain-dead experience, just play Dark Side in this game. Funnily enough, he was actually going to be even more overpowered. David Goodrich, who was a developer on this game, stated how the special weapon was originally going to deflect enemy shots back at them if they tried to shoot you during its activation, which would have made Darkseid an even bigger disaster, so thankfully that didn't happen because this character would probably be number one. At number four, we have an all-time classic in Darktooth, but this time it's from Twisted Metal Head On, where he's actually playable without a Game Shark code. Now, in Machine Gun Upgrade the video game, the power resides in just that, the damage of your machine guns being the best thing in the entire game. Only two characters have different machine guns than regular characters. One is Cousin Eddie, who shoots out white missiles that suck, and Dark Tooth, who shoots out Sweet Tooth Special as a machine gun, which is obviously going to be broken beyond all comprehension. You can quite literally forget about any weapon pickups throughout your playthrough, and I did say this with Axel, but in seriousness, there will be times where you actually do need to get weapons like against Dark Tooth or a boss or something, but here I actually mean it. You have infinite machine guns, they track exceptionally well, deal really good damage. The only problem that you do have is hearing the most annoying ear piercing sound while using them, which forces me to put this game on mute whenever I play as Dark Tooth. Like, 
What a fantastic idea that was. Like, ah, yes, I love to hear this every moment that I'm shooting a machine gun. It's not going to give me a headache whatsoever. Regardless, Darktooth was a great unlock, playing as a character that most wanted to as a kid when they played Twisted Metal 2 for the very first time. Of course, the actual boss fight against Darktooth is actually a joke and head-on, just a flaccid Johnson. So it sort of gives you whiplash when you fight him and see how awful he is and then play as him and see how broken he is. Since on top of having those machine gun sweet tooth specials, he also has the highest armor in the entire game with a Mr. Slam clone special for some reason. I don't really know why, but who cares when you have these machine guns? Just use these all game long and you'll be perfectly fine. Number three is Minion from Twisted Metal 2. It's impossible to have a best character list without having this big fuck on it. The original cheat character of this series. Put in your code, select Minion, and the rest of your playthrough will be an actual clown show. Of course, as Warthog's big brother, you would expect this, you know, since literally every iteration of Warthog, Minion is just a better version of him. I don't know if anyone else noticed that. Whatever title both of these characters are a part of, Minion will always be a tier above Warthog. When it comes to playing as Minion in Twisted Metal 2, all you're required to do is select your special on the weapon wheel, press a button that will most likely hit your enemy, while they're frozen, turbo ram them, and whoever that poor soul was will be crushed underneath your wheels. That's quite literally your strategy. There's no thought, no nothing, just brain dead fun. If you really wanted to, the player could freeze the opponent and turn around to shoot the mega guns from behind that some people don't even know are coming out. I'm not entirely sure why Minion shoots out these mega guns from behind, but he does. It's not good or helpful, but they exist. Number two is Juggernaut from Twisted Metal 2012. This character is just broken. It seems like you can take endless fire from every angle and it won't do anything to you unless you're blatantly trying to kill yourself. When it comes to unlocking Warthog, which requires the player to get all gold medals on Twisted Difficulty, to my understanding, the best way to do it is just using this thing. Twisted Difficulty is quite tough, so if anyone's struggling to unlock that waste of space character, just use Juggernaut. Your special weapon is dropping mines which is a decent special if you're getting chased but in reality this truck could shoot out dust and it would still be overpowered just the simple fact that death does not apply to you makes you one of the best characters in the series to me plus the ramming damage is insane and tons of fun to do i'm not sure if the multiplayer version is different or what since i'm strictly talking about the single player here but i would assume it's much of the same what would have made more sense for 2012 is actually unlocking juggernaut for getting all the gold rather than warthog you know because juggernaut is pretty overpowered and you can barely ever die with the character. This would have been a much more interesting reward than getting blue balled with a mid character that smells. At number one, the only character that fits in this spot is Sweet Tooth from Twisted Metal 4. Any other choice is just wrong. I cannot think of another character in this series where you can finish the entire game without moving. With Sweet Tooth, a player could actually do that. The special alone makes it possible. Henchman is one of the most disastrous things I've ever seen in a game. Shooting a special that goes through walls, holds enemies in place, lights them on fire, and shoots missiles while they all periodically explode after finishing their job. Almost every regular enemy in the entire game can be killed by one use of henchmen. If they don't die, just shoot another one and they will be a goner. You also have the most armor in the entire game, and with how long it takes to kill people in Twisted Metal 4, that means you're never going to die, so you have the best of every world possible aside from speed, but even still, only like two or three characters are faster, so it doesn't really matter anyways. It's always funny to see someone who's never played Twisted Metal 4 go against Sweet Tooth for the very first first time. They won't die a single time throughout the tournament, and then losing all their lives and getting game over during this fight. Sweet Tooth will send them the fuck out of his carnival. This character is just dumb and there's no other way to put it. I don't really understand how this even made it into the game, I'm not going to lie. It's broken and should not even be here at all. No one could ever argue another character being in this spot, it's just not possible. So that is my list of the most overpowered characters in Twisted Metal history. If you have one of your own, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching to the end. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And also check out my last video on the Twisted Metal modding scene if you're interested in that. It enhances some of the other games in this series that are pretty cool. There's a lot of enhancements. It's really fun. And I recommend you check that video out and try those mods out as well. Or you can check out the other video on screen, which is about the worst characters in the Twisted Metal franchise. Oh.